I'm certainly very proud and honored to be here with our special guest this evening, particularly Dr. Jeffries, who used to visit us many times when the Kepler Study Group brought him and other institutions, including Briar Community College. He has so much to share and give to us. He is one of our elders. He is a gentleman who has seen much and who has been challenged many times because he stands up for who he is and who we are. So when he gets here, when he gets to the podium, I want you all to please give him a round and standing ovation because he is a man of much courage. The 2007 Marcos Mosiah Garvey Community Service Award presented by Roots Foundation to Dr. Leonard Jeffries here with us on the stage for your outstanding and exemplary contribution to the upliftment of the global and African community on this Friday, August 17, 2007. I have been in the presence of Brother Jeffries for the last couple of days, and tonight, our ultimate day, our ultimate headache because the man filled me head with so much information, <laughs> so much knowledge. I feel so powerful, I feel like I can move all the world here because I said knowledge is power. And the man fooled me to the brim. I have to take time now and program them into the memory bank and run through them. So I can you know, fully comprehend them. But the man of the hour, the man with a whole wealth of information for everyone, black, white, purple, blue. Brother Jeffries, we are glad to have, to have you in our presence and we are honored you know, to have you as one of our freedom fighters, Pan-Africanists, Black Nationalists. Okay, the best way to arm yourself for this war is intellectual weaponry. It's a war for the mind. Why is this so important for the world to control the African mind? Because whoever controls the African mind, M-I-N-D, will have a chance to control the African mind, M-I-N-E, the wealth of Africa. Boom. And so you program the Africans against themselves. You program them at a low level. You impose a slave mentality on them, as Bob Marley sang about. Mental liberation, mental slavery, uh, is what we are dealing with and mental liberation is what we have to see. And how does this control take place? It's controlled throughout the culture. We've been acculturated white and we've been denied our Africanness, which is the foundation of the human family. The first people to conceive of family were Africans. The first people to conceive of culture at all the levels, the low culture, the, the middle culture, the high culture, the spiritual culture were Africans. The first people to organize themselves economically and politically and culturally and produce the systems of high development were African peoples. So we have to understand that our sacred mission is to restore our Africanness to its fullness, to allow us to utilize the blessings that the Creator has put in our hands. But you can't do it if your mind is controlled by your enemy. You can't do it if your leaders are demonized at every level. And so I take uh, it as a matter of pride and wear my badge of pride being demonized by the enemy. You can't let your enemy decide who your leaders are. And all of our great leaders were demonized. Marcus Garvey was demonized. He had a sacred mission to restore Africanness and he did his great work. Thousands of units of the UNIA were found throughout the African world, particularly in North America, but even in South Africa. And the focus of the African Communities League was to pull our people together, even if they were in Europe. And then to control what? Our economics. Control what? Our politics. To control what? Our culture. Even black, a black consciousness of God was brought to bear by Marcus Garvey. Black cross nurses, black military, black buy black, black stock and investments in the great company. And I take pride to say that we're following that tradition, having put an investment package together to make a purchase in, in Africa to show that it can be done and that Garvey's vision was correct and that we can maintain African communities wherever we are and link them up. Not all of us are going to go to Africa. Some of us are going to stay here, but some of us are going to go to Ethiopia. There's no place more sacred on the world in the world than Ethiopia. I've been to Ethiopia many times. I've been to Lalibela, where 
King Lollibella built 12 stone churches from the ground down, wonders of the world. I've been to Gondar. I've been to Aksum. I've been in Jubilee Palace with the Emperor Haile Selassie. 